Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. Scott Golden here with you, and uh, we're going to have a lot of content today because I'm going to try and get caught up on the week's television reviews for the major programs as best of my ability in between clients today. So you'll probably have four or five videos to or audios to listen to today. Uh, we're going to start with the AEW um, Dynamite episode from last evening. We open with a Jake Roberts promo, always a good way to open. Uh, Roberts says that uh, the TNT Network must have been thinking about Lance Archer when they developed the TNT Championship. Uh, says that Archer turns heads wherever he walks and uh, that he is basically hands of steel and sex appeal. He's had a chip on his shoulder about having to go all the way to Japan to get work and that uh, basically the Members of the AEW Society are going to pay for uh, him having to do that. He says that Kokoban is good, but not good enough. Uh, further saying that uh, Archer will win the TNT Championship, but that will just be the beginning of his destruction. Chris mm-hmm. Jericho and Kenny Shivani preview the night's nice action up next. Kokoban video package is uh, right to follow. Uh, he says he's silly upon occasion, but he knows how to wrestle to get done. He says he expected to be um, here just as he had been around the world for the last 20 years, and says uh, he's now looking past Lance Archer. And it, I mean, it was a good promo. Um, I always prefer Jake. Jake's probably in my top five promo of all time. I wish he'd said a little bit more about about um, maybe, you know, that other people in North America didn't want Archer, but that that was his game. I think that's a perfect place to take a dig at, at WWE if needed without implicitly saying the name of the company. I think that's how you do something like that. I question Cabana being placed in this spot uh, to be the one to put Archer over in the quarterfinal match, uh, in so much that Cabana is relatively new to the promotion. Um, If we go strictly with the idea that most fans don't know who he is uh, in North America and the majority of fans outside of the TNT core audience probably do not, very few remembering his time in WWE as uh, Scotty Goldman or whatever the heck his name was there, um, so very few know who he is. I think if you had run that video package last week and perhaps the week before, uh, or another video package the week before, and now you're putting him in the ring with Archer, you might have had something. But the timing on this was just off. Um, Archer looks like a beast, and I've never really seen all that much of him that I remember. I think uh, when he was predominantly in the WWE, I wasn't really paying much attention to what was going on. Uh, Archer knocked down a wrestler on his way to the ring and went after Cabana with some deliberate forearm strikes early before the bell opens. Uh, Cabana comes back with chops. Now, Cabana standing toe-to-toe with a guy that was at least six inches taller than him looks stupid to me. It was it was a poor visual. Um, I, I hate when, when they do this, when guys who you're trying to get over as a monster heel uh, have to have competitive matches with guys who just aren't at their league. Um, and then we see Archer hit uh, a few power a, a few power moves. Uh, he hits a version of a Vader bomb and then uh, basically starts to start his way around the ring like he has nothing to worry about. We go then to commercial. We come back from the commercial after the break. Archer Misses a second rope splash. Too many misses of top rope or second rope moves in this match for my taste. Um, Cabana back with an elbow and, and a strike uh, of a move they call the Flying Apple, which is basically a butt butt into the corner. I don't know why it's called the Flying Apple, um, unless we're making a reference with everyone from the uh, area of the Big Apple is an ass. Uh, anyway, uh, Cabana. Hit the flip flop and fly on the dusty road, and he is countered with really a pounds on the choke slam. Cabana blocks the charge in the corner, 
and Archer powers Cabana up into the blackout for the pin. Uh, Britt Baker cuts a teacher-style promo, reminding me a little bit of the old Kurt Angle 3i promo, the Integrity Intensity uh, Intelligence type promo. She says the first rule of being a role model is always to fight fair. She said that she didn't do that, and last week she suffered a deviated septum. She being uh, Britt Baker, for her pal. Um, and then uh, Baker said she fought last week without the, the support of the fans in the crowd. Uh, then we go into a squash by Britt Baker. Uh, and, you know, relatively simple, simplistic match here. Uh, um, you know, Ariel Hawani says that he predicts that ha- Hager is going to win the championship match. Taz goes a little bit deeper into it and says that Hager has an advantage, uh, but that in the end he would go with the wrestler in Moxley. Um, Taz breaks down the hold of, of Hager, which the more I see it, the more I realize it's an awkward blend of an MMA move, the head and arm choke, um, that doesn't seem to fit in traditional wrestling. Interesting that they did get a chance to show some of the footage from uh, Hager's Bellator uh, fights. And then, um, actually, I jumped ahead here. Baker and Golden is up next. Baker hit the kick to the knee and then a super kick to the chin. Uh, Baker with a curve stomp over the bottom open pin, sir. Ron Funches and Mike Goldberg give their predictions regarding the main event. And I don't really quite understand why these people are here. Perhaps they're a bigger deal in mainstream society, of which I'm not a part. Um, and Goldberg says that he picks Hager. Uh, Goldberg is certainly an interesting fellow. Uh, video promo for the next pay-per-view, if it can, can air on May 23rd. Well done. I don't know why they didn't say the second annual uh, Double or Nothing. That just seems to ignore history, which to this point, the AEW has been pretty good about not doing. Uh, Santana Ortiz run down the Young Bucks. Guevara says he's not a fake Latino. Hager says he's going to beat the heck out of Moxley later. And Jericho does his old campy comedy stuff. Uh, this in a circle bit was just, it was a knockoff on the Brady Bunch. It was kind of goofy and time killer ish, but with what they had to work with, it was what it was. Uh, Guevara versus Shogdi. Uh, Shogdi, predominantly known for his work in PWX and other Carolina level independents. Good guy, doesn't get to show a lot of what you can do here. Guevara used a wrist lock takedown, and then he he mocks his opponent. Um, still gets a nice arm drag, and then gets cut off with a delayed vertical suplex for a near fall. Uh, let's see, Guevara then misses a splash in the corner. Boom, boom, boom. Still makes a comeback, hits some chops. And for our uppercut, Guevara then answers with a running knee and an inverted DPS pin. The knee of Guevara looks really good here. I hope he goes with that, but I hope he uses it as a single move finish in the future. He says that he's in the first round TNT Championship Tournament. Uh, he then gets aggressive and beats the heck out of um, Shug D post-match. Darby Allen comes out. Guevara is less than happy that he is interrupted in affecting Shug, and Alan running out to make the save seems to have him well distracted. Uh, MMA ref Big John McCarthy and Excalibur will give their predictions about the main event. Obviously, McCarthy, knowing more about MMA, goes with Hager, and Excalibur picks Moxley. Interesting how the wrestling guys are picking the wrestler. You know, the MMA guys are picking the MMA guy. It makes sense, but it's just a little touch where it does make sense. Um, next match up, I found completely useless. 
And it's no insult to either guy. I just, it felt like something that was there to kill time. Kip Saban with the Melody Ford, Chuck Taylor. They worked hard, but it never really clicked for me. Uh, match is good in the sense that it does have some change wrestling exchanges and um, a good springboard dropkick by Saban. Or Sabian, I'm sorry. Uh, match goes to the outside. Use of the ring apron by Taylor. Taylor then misses a moonsault and springboard dropkick then again by uh, Sabian. Uh, penalty kick for another near fall. And let's see. Then they fight again to the outside. Penelope Ford gets involved, hits with uh, kicks and forearm shots on her man's opponent. Uh, Sabian then uh, hit Taylor with a top, ro- a top rope and sees a dragon suplex. He's two. Uh, uh, and then, you know, I mean, there's no point for that sort of thing. Um, you know, they do the back and forth block. Taylor uses Falcon Arrow, shoot up Powerbomb, force in your fall. Uh, Taylor has to double stomp, saving you get a uh, draping suplex, double stomp again, and then Jimmy Havoc jumps out of the crowd and hits, uh, Orange has to do with a DDT on the floor, who'd been outside with Taylor. The finish store forward hit, hit a flying head scissors off the top rope on Taylor, and then Sabian rolls up um, Taylor for the win. Eight roll up finishes. Don't really understand why this one was necessary. Um, some people think this is one of the better empty arena matches one can see. I didn't get it to click with me at all, other than it was there to fill time. Sean Spears against Justin Law in a score. Um, and uh, Law isn't even ready to be on TV as he can't take a basic snap there. Um, Spears isn't taking it seriously. This is giving him an opportunity to try some amateur wrestling. Uh, Law and then gets a quick two count on Spears. Spears hit his finish for the finish in a quick pin. Uh, a pair of TNT tournament matches will announce the next week. Guevara versus Allen and Rhodes versus Sabian. If Sabian beats Rhodes, I think I'm going to pull my hair out, but that's probably where we're going. Um, Havoc versus Cassidy. And Mr. Brody in action next week. Omega is is in action as well. Um, And then we go to the World Championship match, but not before. Josh Thompson and uh, Santana predicted that Hager, Hager would beat Mockley for the championship this evening. Great effort by everybody involved in the match trying to make it special. Jim Ross in the Indy play by play role certainly did that. I, I like Ross more by himself than I do when he's working with Excalibur and Shivani. I would say that Shivani is the best uh, announcer in wrestling right now, but Ross by himself. It's something special as well. Um, you know, obviously, this match could have benefited from a crowd, but we don't have that option. A bit interesting that this has to go uh, all of about 30 minutes, and there's no crowd reaction with named the match Dragon Spot. Um, taking down then on bars early. Both guys transitioning back and forth in a more traditional map based fight. Uh, Hager powered out and hit a series of strikes. Moxley then tries an ankle pick, can't get it done. Hager rolls through and tries for an ankle lock of his own. However, Moxley gets to the ropes and we will not do a clean break, oddly enough. Moxley hits some chops and then a wrist lock transfers into the FTF attempt. Uh, Moxley goes for Kimura. Hager escapes and then uh, hits. Some really weak looking stomps in the corner. Uh, after striking and exchange, Moxley turns both ends to the outside, launches a hit to the outside, and he hits a cross arm breaker. Hagger escapes and gets back to his feet with several strikes. Hagger throws Moxley into the barricade. Uh, Moxley then went for a gotch style pile driver on the concrete floor, but the challenger was able to backdrop it and stop that from happening. Uh, let's see. Um, 
my notes seem to be running away from me here. And then we've got uh, an eventual kind of a, a bit of a role for Moxley, who uh, doesn't get away without some damage being done. Uh, we see they fight into the seats all around the building, drug chops, and, you know, they're doing everything they can with the empty building. Hagger escapes a guillotine and drops Moxley out of the barricade, and they continue to brawl, brawl throughout the building. Uh, use of the ring steps. Mr. Vader bomb by the Challenger. Playing Regal knee strike and a double down. Hagger with a gut wrench power bomb for near fall. Uh, after that, Moxley. Um, well, we go to a commercial break there, and then. Um, most of the DDT can't get Hagger rolled into it, and uh, he instead rolls into the head and arm choke, but Moxley gets to the ropes. Moxley rolls to the floor. They're back on the floor, use of a chair. Uh, and then Hagger wedges the chair between the middle and top turnbuckle. Moxley misses with a charge and hits the chair. Hagger rolls him up for near fall, but doesn't get the job done. Hagger then uses the chair on Moxley's left leg. Hagger applies an ankle lock and Moxley kicks him off. Uh, Moxley then uses the attempted uh, momentum to his advantage. Moxley hits the arm DDT and then uses it to apply the guillotines. Instead, Hagger slips out of that, trading strikes again. Hagger hits a low blow and then Moxley uses the chair for the pin but not before hitting the turret and dying shift for the pin. Um, Moxley cuts promo about how he's the champion. He'll fight anywhere, anyone, in any town. AEW is the hardest promotion on the planet, and the close the show for the world to see. Now, looking at that on its own, I would have saved it for several more weeks. I don't quite understand why you take a guy who's fought in a, quote, real, quote, sport like Bellator, and throw him away this early at Moxley. As a matter of fact, if I'm trying to differentiate my organization from WWE, I think I'm in a position of wanting to put Hagler on top at least for a little while. You could have set that up over several more months and ultimately had, you know, hey, we have a real athlete. What do they have over on their brand? They have a washed-up former UFC fighter in Brock Lesnar, or they have, you know, a guy like Drew McIntyre who got fired 10 years ago. Whatever have you, you can certainly draw that into alignment. Uh, you know, McIntyre and Strowman versus a real fighter who's winning. You know, you, you set up some sense of illusion there that AEW may have the better pound for pound real athlete champion. These uh, empty arena matches are going to be laborious, and how many more weeks can we do it before people start tuning out in mass? Who knows? But that is your AEW report for the 15th of April, 2020. I will be back in a little bit with your NXT report. I have not seen the show yet, so I can't get caught up. I'd be hard-pressed to say that I would expect NXT to be better. Uh, I tend to prefer the AEW products because the one thing that shines through with their talent is they really always look like they're having fun. Uh, NXT talent is too sanitized for me at times, and we'll see. Uh, once again, this is Scott Golden with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel reminding you keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.